Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number five of the Turbo Time 5-Minute AMA. Last week, we were talking about part files. This week, we're going to continue that discussion by looking at how you build new parts, including how to weld other models together into a new part. So, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the parts that I've put into Project Odyssey that are welded. So here's one right here. This is a life support module. I have it filled with food. Another welded part in Odyssey is this fuel tank right here. You can see that it has this fuel tank down here at the bottom and it has it again up here it also has one of these fuel tanks in the middle and another one at the top now the way that i created that was by taking the welding tool and modifying the scale values after i had created it now these days it would be a lot easier actually to create that because tweak scale allows you to resize things when i first made this part i didn't have tweak scale so it was much harder although there is one more thing that you would need the, to be able to do by hand because if you look at it this is very close to the part the way that i have it in fact i think i can stick it to the side here get a radial attachment there you can see now it's a little bit shorter actually in here and it's a lot shorter at the top and I will show you in a moment how I achieved that. Also over here we have an extremely complicated welded part. We have this one that has all these pipes and lights and ladders and antenna. Uh, finally this one over here I welded some additional ladders onto the outside of that one. Well, suppose we go back to this example over here. Let's say we have that fuel tank and we want, not that fuel tank, this is the fuel tank we want to make. Let's say we have that one we want to make and we have this one that we're starting with and we want to attach this one to the bottom of it and we'll make it a little bit bigger. We want to take another copy of that, put it right here, and then we want one more tank up there and then we'll fix the scaling problems in just a moment. But let's say we do this, then we would take this, move it over here, and this wasn't previously working, so I had to create this by hand, but now it is working. The UBOZER welding mod, it's back in business. So you just grab this, and you move it over here, you click on weld, and you get this part module thing, and then you just hit save, and bam, you've got yourself a new part. We need to find where the part went, so we go into the Project Odyssey folder, which is where I did the welding, into the game data, to the UBO folder. It will have a parts folder, we go in there, and based on the type of part that we welded, we'll find another subfolder, like propulsion, and inside that, you're going to find the name of the folder you created. In my case, I didn't change the folder name, so it still says welded part. In that folder, we find the actual part file. When we open the part file, we find this. There are a whole bunch of things that aren't quite right about this. We'll begin with the fact that it says physical significance equals negative one. Usually I just completely delete that line so that we don't interfere with the normal physics of the game at all. Next up we have the stacks. It put some really elaborate, crazy looking names a lot of times on them. I like to change them to just say like node stack bottom or top. It will also use a lot of exponential numbers when it wants to represent zeros. So I will usually delete all of that garbage and just turn the E minus 13 type stuff, minus 14 and all that down into real zeros. If some of the numbers get really long that I am keeping, I will often truncate them down to a few significant digits because more than that doesn't really ever seem to be noticeable. I will also sometimes have to fix the direction that the node is facing. And this one is supposed to be facing up and down, so I have a one in the Y location. And then occasionally you need to change the node size to make sure the physics treats it correctly. I would like to have a three on this. So the node stack bottom and top have been modified here. If you want it to be radial, attachable you can leave the node attach if you want you can take that out and it won't be attachable but you also have to change the attach rules to take out the second one and turn that into a zero I'm gonna leave mine alone as it is uh, you'll probably want if you haven't already named it you'll want to change the title to something else and I'll usually also change the manufacturer in the description and then it will oftentimes modify the drag model to say override and have a bunch of zeros. I believe that's because I'm using Ferrum Aerospace perhaps. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I always just change those back to normal saying default with something around 0.2 and a two angular drag. 
Now when we scroll down, we have our model names. The model line shows the path to the model file, and this is why you want to make sure that you are not moving your folders around, because a lot of times mods will even have these sorts of model files inside themselves. So if you move a mod into a different directory from where it was intended to be installed, then the part won't load. The same is true for my modified part here. If I were to do this and then I take out KW or Aerojet or I move any of those parts around to a new location, then these parts will stop loading. Anyway, another thing that you'll see in here is that uh, there's some rotation lines. In this particular case, I don't really need anything rotated, so I decided to delete them all. Once again, I also changed all of the E minus six and all of that stuff. When they're just supposed to be zeros, I turn them back into zeros. I'll often space the values out to make them a little bit easier to read as well. And sometimes truncate the position values down to something that is uh, less significant digits, again, so it's easier to read. In this case, I didn't do that. Now, the next thing we need to do is we know that we want those orange tanks to be shorter. The up and down direction to squash something down is the middle value. That's the Y direction. So I'm going to change this Y direction squash on the top fuel tank from a 1.25 down to a 0.7 and see what that looks like in the game. We'll also modify the second tank, make it uh, from 1.25 down into a 1. If I wanted to change how big around it was, I would want to change the X and the Z. But in this case, I'm only squashing the part. So we're going to leave it at that and then go take a look at it in the game. So let's see what we have managed to do. If we load the fuel tank back up, it is exactly as we expected it to be. We shrunk this one in the middle. Oh, it looks like I got them reversed. Actually, the one at the top must have been the one that was supposed to be in the middle here. And the second one we shrunk down to a one from one to five was really the top one. I wasn't really paying close enough attention to that. We can fix this by simply flipping those values in the part file again, change the scaling factors, but we also have the problem of these huge gaps. We're going to need to go back to the part file and remove those huge gaps by modifying the position values of the models. These positions right here indicate where in the, because the X and the Z are all zero in this case, it indicates where in the Y direction, the up and down direction, this model is supposed to appear. The top one is at around minus seven meters. The second one, minus 15. Then we have one and then nine. Now the Y direction positive values go up toward the ceiling. So as it turns out, this got saved in reverse order. The one at the top is close to the bottom. Then the second one down is the very bottom. The third entry is the second from the top and the bottom entry is the very top. A lot of times I will resort these to make them go from top to bottom. That makes it easier for me to see where they are. In addition to that, we would need to modify those values. And instead of 9, 1, minus 7, and minus 15, we would start shrinking the parts together by reducing those values and bringing them back towards zero. Or sometimes I will pick a particular model and I will set that one model to 0, 0, 0 position by deleting the line entirely, which defaults it to 0, 0, 0. From there, I can then just position the other models up and down relative to that one. That can either be done trial and error style by putting in a value, seeing where it appears in the VAB, changing the value as appropriate, or you can do some math on the original node values and know that if the part is supposed to be 15 meters tall, then seven and a half meters up and seven and a half meters down is going to be where the node would touch. So if you were to put a three meter part on top of a 15 meter tank, then you would want to go up by seven and a half meters from the middle of the first tank and down by one and a half meters on the second. You add those two together and you would actually go up by nine meters or down by nine meters. Anyway, I believe at this point I have given you enough that you can go in there and start fiddling around with your parts of your own. You now know where the position value, the scaling value is, what the model name line is all about, and those are the most important ones. The stuff at the bottom, the module information, that gets a little more advanced, so I would suggest before you get into that, just weld some easy parts like fuel tanks or putting stuff that doesn't have modules like ladders and stuff on the outside of 
space station modules or what have you. And even then, things don't come out perfectly. You will occasionally have to go in and modify positions of things to get them back where they really belong. Anyway, until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts. Greetings, Kerbinauts. No. Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I am Bob Fitch, and this is Turbo... I don't even know which number I'm on. Where's my list? Uh-oh. 4,900 subs. I'm one away from 5,000. What am I going to do at 5,000? 500,000 views. Hitting some milestones. Okay. Turbo times number five. All right. Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number five of the Turbo Time 5-Minute AMA.